Hi there, I'm Mark from Valor XL. Thank you so much for joining me today. And before you do anything else, click on the link in the description below this video. I'm not kidding. You have to do that first. If you don't do that first, none of anything else we talk about today is going to make much sense. And that's because today I want to talk about taking your organization's temperature. Now, if you have ever seen any other videos here on Valor XL, you know that that's what I always close with. I always offer everybody access to the free PDF that we created to help organizations to take a look at how healthy they are. It can be really tough to assess yourself. We all get so caught up in the day-to-day -day of what we're doing, we lose track of the big picture. And sometimes when you're scurrying around trying to make sure that you have all the bases covered without even realizing it, you're overlooking things. And when things start to slip through the cracks, that's where a really slow, gradual, sometimes imperceptible unraveling can take place in your organization. So it's critically important that you take a look right now at taking your organization's temperature because everything I want to share with you in the next few minutes will be based on you doing that. So if you take a look at it, you can download it, you can print it out, and I'd suggest that you take a few minutes to go through and basically look at each one of the components in it Go ahead and give your responses, and then what we talk about here will make a lot more sense for you and be a lot more applicable. If you go through taking your organization's temperature, you'll see that each one of the statements is basically asking you to describe how often this applies to your particular circumstances. Whether you have a small business, a nonprofit, a church, it doesn't really matter what the organization is. We're looking at the climate of your operations. How do you really approach doing what it is that you do? Now, the responses carry with them a numeric value. So when you're done, total everything up. And if you follow the guide on taking your organization's temperature, you'll see that your responses will place you into one of three categories, inactive, reactive, or proactive. So take a look at how you're doing things and then check back with me in just a second. Well, how did you do? You know, taking your organization's temperature can be a real eye-opener because we all get kind of myopic. We get so geared into what we're doing, we lose sight of what it is that we're actually doing. And especially over the period of the last few years, there have been so many obstacles thrown in the path of small businesses and nonprofits that it's really become more challenging than ever. If you look back to early 2020, as the pandemic was unfolding, so many organizations suddenly found themselves thrust into a scenario they were never expecting. Maybe they started that year thinking it would be business as usual, but they had the very harsh discovery that nothing would ever be the same again. And so inactive businesses, reactive businesses, and proactive businesses all took their own approach during that year. And that's continued to play out ever since. So to help you understand where you fit in this equation, let's talk briefly about what each of those three categories mean. Maybe you weren't too pleased with the results of what you did and you find yourself in the inactive category. Now, businesses that are inactive are basically just sitting back hoping something happens in a positive way for them. And as the pandemic was unfolding, that unfortunately applied to a lot of organizations. They were unwilling or unable to embrace new technology. They didn't want to modify the structure of what they'd always done. And as a net result, as the pandemic played out and things got more and more difficult, it became really difficult for those businesses to even maintain status quo, let alone trying to experience any type of growth. If you find yourself inactive, it's a pretty good indicator that you haven't really invested a high degree of analysis into what you're doing. Operations analysis sounds like a really intimidating concept. It's incredibly basic, but it's so powerful. And it really comes down to just taking a look at how you've structured everything in your organization. You started off with a very specific purpose for doing what you do. You need to make sure that that trickles down. It has to start at the top where your policies are, the things that govern how you do business. And it needs to move all the way through the procedures that really determine the day-to-day -day operations that support that business into how you instruct and train and retain your staff, your team members, maybe even volunteers or interns. If you fail to do those things, you're kind of setting yourself up for disaster. 
maybe things will work out. But the business world is competitive and ever-changing, and you don't want to rely on something that's outside of your control. There will always be outside factors and variables that we have to contend with, but it's really critical that we take as much initiative and exercise as much control as we can over what we're doing so that we have a competitive advantage and so that we can really lay out a solid strategy to move forward. Now, maybe you found yourself in the reactive category, and that's okay. It's kind of middle ground. It's not awful, but it's not optimal either. And if you're reactive, it means that you do make necessary changes, but primarily only after something else has happened. You instigate something in your organizational structure. You go off on a new path, but you do it usually because there's been some negative event. Something has happened. There's been a catalyst that you weren't too crazy about. And as a result, you said, yeah, we could do things a little bit better. And when you're in that reactive mode, the problem is it can be really difficult to spot because normally if you're reactive, it does mean that you have some sort of an infrastructure that enables you to make modifications to your operational processes. And that can really lull you into a false sense of feeling like you're enjoying tremendous success and that things are really solid. But if you find yourself continually having to adjust, that can point to a real room for improvement. Because one of the things that can happen in that reactive mode is that your staff, your employees, your team members, they may be able to do certain things, but it's, again, always in the context of responding to something else that happened. They tend to get programmed into a mindset where they don't really feel empowered. They don't really feel confident in taking initiative because they're operating under direction from management that might be changing all the time. When you don't really lay out a strategy and take proactive steps up front, then you do have to constantly tweak. And as you're tweaking, you have to find relevant ways to disseminate that to the people who are working in your organization. So you might still be carrying out your mission. You might be working toward that more elaborate vision that you'd like to accomplish, but you may not really be on the true roadmap to success that you were hoping for. That's where you might find yourself if you're in the proactive category. And that's the one we all want to be in. Being proactive is a lot more than a buzzword. It really is about incredible focus and intentionality. And that occurs in every level of your organization. It's you if you're the business owner, if you have a board of directors, if you have any kind of a steering committee or a management team, whoever has a hand somewhere on that plow needs to be gripping it very firmly. And you really have to do things in unity. There has to be a very clear and single-minded purpose behind your organization, and you have to constantly be refreshing your perspective, which doesn't mean that you just change what you're all about from day to day, but you do need to recalibrate. And as we continue to navigate, as I said earlier, we'll always face challenges in our organizations. So it comes down to having a perspective that enables you to really maintain the focus of what started everything in the first place. It's so easy to get distracted and we all get there. But if you really want to not only succeed, but lay groundwork for real growth and development, enabling you to morph into something way beyond what you originally anticipated, you can only do it with strategy and purposeful planning. And so hopefully by looking at wherever you fit into one of those three categories, you can plan as you go into the new year of 2023. I felt like this was a good episode to put at the end of 2022. Maybe this isn't necessarily a time that you make big business adjustments. That may be based more around your fiscal year, which could hit at any time. But year's end, we always kind of look at ourselves and say, well, what could I do better next go around? So as you prepare to enter the new year, look at where you fell. If you're proactive, then great, more power to you, keep up the good work. If you're in one of the other two categories, maybe there are some things you can start putting more focus and attention toward. And at Valor XL, we'd love to be able to help you do that. Over the years, we have developed a tremendous knowledge base that came out of our own experience of operating a small nonprofit. 
we really did find creative ways to do more with less. And I know that tends to be a cliche, but we actually did find that you can do that if you maintain the proper perspective. You don't have to stop. You don't have to shut down. You don't have to do less. You can continue to branch out and try new things and develop, but it really does come down to perspective. We'd like to help give you a clear perspective of where you stand. So I'd like to recommend that you reach out to us. You can contact us at info at valorxl.com if you have questions about what we offer or how we can help you. You can also visit our website, www.valorxl.com, and take a look at all the various services that we offer. We really are committed to helping you do smart work and as we move forward, we'd love to partner with you to help you on a really great trajectory for not just success, but stability. Stability is something that you can make happen. It might seem completely unattainable, but it is within your grasp if you plan and you persevere. So let us partner with you in doing that. If this was helpful for you, would you please help us by giving us a like and please subscribe we have great new content coming on a regular basis, specifically tailored for small businesses and nonprofits. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. And even though we have a few more installments before the end of the year, I do wish you the best of success in the new year. And as you move forward, I really encourage you, always be self-analytical. That's really the fundamental building block that everything you do in your organization rests firmly on. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please come back next time. Remember, we are here for you. We want you to thrive. We want to really help you do smart work. Thanks again. Please join me next time. Until then, bye for now.